Good morning, everybody. Today, I want to talk about becoming a Buddha. In fact, the title of my sermon that today is simply "Become the Buddha." You know, Shakyamuni Buddha was born as Siddhartha, son of a royal family. His father being the royal head of the Shakya clan household. As a youth, he enjoyed a life of lavish affairs, being raised in a palace full of treasures, having everything that he could want. Prince Siddhartha had everything that today's society, and the society of his time, said that one needed to be happy, namely, wealth and power. Yet with all of these treasures and pleasures, he still felt that something was missing in his life. He was not happy. Well, uh, Prince Siddhartha one day went outside the palace walls and uh, he encountered an elderly man. Having been raised in a life where everything was youthful and perfect, he had never seen such a sight. It had been prophesied at his birth that he would either become a powerful leader or a great sage. The, his father, the king, was so worried that if he ever saw anything unpleasant, such as disease or death or old age, that he would abandon the throne and become a sage. And of course, his father, the king, wanted Prince Siddhartha to become a mighty warrior. But as the story goes on, um, after he encountered the elderly man, he also encountered a diseased man, a dead man, and lastly, a monk. Now, as I said, he lived a life full of lust and luxury. Never before had he encountered these things. He realized that someday he would become old. He would get sick. And he would die. After much thought on these matters, and after being deeply troubled, he determined that he had to find a way to overcome the sufferings of birth, old age, disease, and death. The monk that he had encountered deeply impressed him. And so, he left his family, his riches, his palace, and his power all behind, and went into a forest meditating and pondering life and its sufferings. He practiced many strict aesthetic ways, fasting, a whole array of prayers, both mental and physical exercises. In fact, he went so far in these practices that he almost died. You see, there was a group of people in that time that believed that through suffering you would achieve enlightenment. Some of them would slowly reduce the amount of food they ate until it was about literally a grain of rice a day. In fact, some of them would also stick their arm up like this and keep holding it up until all the blood stopped flowing to it and withered up and died. Because that was one of the beliefs. That if you suffered, you would achieve enlightenment. However, after trying all of these numerous practices and prayers, he determined that extremes, both on the one side giving in to lust and luxuries as he had done in the palace, and on the other side, strict aesthetic practices as he had done in the forest, were wrong and would not lead to true happiness and enlightenment. With this new teaching in mind, the teaching of the middle way, of avoiding extremes on both ends of life, Siddhartha yet once more set out to find liberation, a way to overcome the sufferings of earthly life. He sat under a tree and decided that he would not move until he found the answers and solutions to life's problems. After meditating for a very long time, and after being tempted by human thoughts, he finally came to the realization that all living beings have the potential to achieve enlightenment and that all things throughout this universe are connected and all need each other to live. He realized that we cannot live for even one moment without the power of the universe. And he also realized that all things are constantly changing. At this moment, this moment of great awakening, he ceased to be Siddhartha. He ceased to be the prince of the Shakya clan and instead became a Buddha, the great Buddha. Now I'm using the term a Buddha and not the Buddha because Buddha means enlightened one. 
It is a term used to refer to individuals who have become awakened to the workings of the universe and the great life force that sustains us all. In fact, the term Buddha can be applied to such great spiritual figures as Jesus of Nazareth, Krishna, Moses, Moses, and even more modern figures such as Mother Teresa or Gandhi. Now Siddhartha, of course, was a great individual, evident by the fact that he is most often simply referred to as the Buddha. Yet he was not the first to become a Buddha, and he has not and will not be the last. Here's the point I want to stress to all of you today. You know, Buddha is not a single person. Nor is Buddhahood exclusively reserved for those godlike individuals such as Shakyamuni Buddha or Jesus or Moses. Yes, of course, the great messengers and prophets of the divine certainly deserve to be called Buddhas. They are indeed enlightened ones who have reached a state of supreme knowledge and who have so graciously shared their wisdom, love and compassion with all of us. Yet they did not just desire that we hear their teachings. You know, Jesus didn't just preach because he, he liked to talk and Buddha didn't go around uh, giving sermons because he liked to hear himself. No, I mean all the prophets of God not only desired that we hear their teachings but that we apply them in our lives and that we too achieve Buddhahood just as they did. Shakyamuni Buddha did not place himself above others, although in my opinion he certainly was greater than most. He humbled himself below us and amongst us to share his teachings. So then my message today is that we all can become a Buddha. Right now, even you, Everybody has the ability and the potential to achieve Buddhahood. We don't have to go into the forest. We don't have to follow strict aesthetic ways. Shakyamuni Buddha and the other prophets, they've already done that for us. Instead, what is Buddha teaching us? He teaches that we must realize and accept that all things are interconnected. That we must rely on nature, that each, and each other and the universe to live. For we cannot live for even a single moment without the great life force of the universe. Without the sun, we would die. Without plants or animals, we would die. And without each other, we would die. He also wants us to know that all things are changing and that we must master the change. Instead of being moved by the change, we must move with the changes. Lastly, to become a Buddha ourselves, we must also see ourselves in others and practice what is called the Bodhisattva Way. The Bodhisattva Way is a life where not only do we work for our own spiritual progress and our own well-being and our own personal enlightenment, but we work for the well-being, happiness, and enlightenment of others. When we begin to see that all life is interconnected, that all things are changing, and that true happiness is found in working for each other, then guess what? We are already becoming a Buddha. My friends, we will at times fall short of the wonderful examples given to us by Buddha and the other great spiritual masters. But we must move forward. Even with our faults, we all have them. But even with them, we can find real, lasting, and unshakable happiness and truly be called a Buddha. Friends, on this very day, begin to walk the Bodhisattva path and start your journey on the road that leads to the Buddha. The Buddha that can be found in each and every one of us, in all of our hearts. Thank you very much, and blessings to all of you.